Hello, boys and girls. Today I'm going to read the story, The Keeping Quilt, by Patricia Polacco. Let's look at the opening page. What can, what does the picture tell you about what might be happening in this story? When my great grandma Anna came to America, she wore the same thick overcoat and big boots she'd worn for farm work. But her family weren't dirt farmers anymore. In New York City, her father's work was hauling things on a wagon and the rest of the family made artificial flowers all day. Everyone was in a hurry and it was so crowded, not like back home in Russia, but all the same, it was their home and most of their neighbors were just like them. So one thing I like about her illustrations is how she adds color here. So I feel like this person must be an important character. When Anna went to school, English sounded to her like pebbles dropping into shallow water. Shh, shh, shh. In six months, she was speaking English. Her parents almost never learned, so she spoke English for them too. The only thing she had left from back home in Russia were her dress and her babushka. She liked to throw it up in the air when she was dancing. So the babushka is like a scarf that she could wear different ways. And that is what the red is. And her dress was getting too small. After her mother had sewn her a new one, she took her old dress and babushka. Then from a basket of old clothes, she took Uncle Vladimir's shirt, Aunt Havla's night dress, and an apron of Aunt ha Natasha's. We will make a quilt to help us always remember our home, Anna's mother said. It will be like having our family in back home Russia dance around us at night. Ooh, what a neat idea. Take bits of fabric and make a quilt. What a special, oh boy. And so it was. Anna's mother invited all the neighborhood ladies. They cut out animals and flowers from the scraps of clothing. Anna kept the needles threaded and handed them to the ladies as they needed them. The border of the quilt was made from Anna's babushka. Look at this beautiful quilt. Now, I like to quilt, but I have never made one that beautiful. On Friday nights, Anna's mother would say the prayers that started the Sabbath. The family ate challah and chicken soup. The quilt was the tablecloth. Anna grew up with and fell in love with great grandpa Sasha. To show he wanted to be her husband, he gave Anna a gold coin, a dried flower, a piece of rock salt, all tied up in a linen handkerchief. The gold was for wealth, the flower for love, and the salt so their lives would have flavor. She accepted the hanky and they were engaged. Under the wedding hopa, Anna and Sasha promised each other love and understanding. After the wedding, the men and women celebrated separately. When my grandma Carl was born, Anna wrapped her daughter in the quilt to welcome her warmly into the world. Carl was given a gift of gold, flour, salt, and bread. Gold, so she would never know poverty. A flower, so she would always know love. Salt, so her life would have flavor. And the bread, so she would never know hunger. Carl learned to keep the Sabbath and to cook and clean and do washing. 
married you'll be someday, Anna told Carol, and... Again, the quilt became the wedding hoopa, and this time for Carol's wedding to Grandpa George, men and women celebrated together, but they still did not dance together, and Carol's wedding bouquet was a gold coin, bread, and salt. Carol and George moved to a farm in Michigan, and Great Grandma Anna came to live with them. The quilt once again wrapped a new little girl, Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen called Anna Lady Grandma and had grown, she had grown very old and was sick a lot of the time. The quilt helped keep her legs warm. On Anna's 98th birthday, the cake was kulak, a, a rich cake with raisins and candied fruit in it. Isn't it nice that her grandma could live with her? Do some of you have grandparents that live with you or nearby? When great grandma Anna died, prayers were said to lift her soul to heaven. My mother, Mary Ellen, was now grown up. There's the quilt. When Mary Ellen left home, she took the quilt with her. When she became a bride, the quilt became her hoopa. For the first time, friends who were not Jews came to the wedding. My mother wore a suit, but her bouquet, in her bouquet were gold, bread, and salt. The quilt welcomed me, Patricia, into the world. And it was the tablecloth for my first birthday party. At night, I would trace my fingers around the edges of each animal on the quilt before I went to sleep. I told my mother stories about the animals on the quilt. She told me whose sleeve had made the horse, whose apron had made the chicken, whose dress had made the flowers, and whose babushka went all around the edge of the quilt. The quilt was a pretend cape when I was in the bull ring, or sometimes a tent in the steaming Amazon jungle. At my wedding to Enzo Marie, Mario, men and women danced together. In my bouquet were gold, bread, and salt, and a sprinkle of wine, so I would always know laughter. So here's a picture at her wedding. Twenty years ago, I held Tracy Denise in the quilt for the first time. Someday she too will leave home and she will take the quilt with her. And this is actually a story um, about the author and her family. So it's about family. It's about traditions. It's about sharing love with one another. So I hope you have a great day. Make it a good one.